Say, friend, my Holy Ghost friend, today is my day of recovery. Hello and welcome to Third Watch. I'm your host, Dr. David Blow. We have a special couple of episodes of Third Watch coming up over the next couple of weeks. We'll be talking from the general theme of recovering our future. I hear people say all the time that I'm going to take back what the devil stole from me. However, every time I check back in with them, they still do not appear to have any of their stuff back. It will be good for those servant whose master finds them watching when he comes. It will be good for those servant whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Welcome to the third watch broadcast. Hello and welcome to Third Watch. I'm your host, Dr. David Blow, along with Dr. Danita Blow. We thank you for tuning this way this morning. We have an awesome show for you today because we're talking from the theme, Recovering Our Future. I say, friend, my Christian friend, today is my day of recovery. I wish you'd find somebody else. Say, friend, my spirit-filled friend, today is my day of recovery because all of us know that there's some things that we've lost there's some things that the devil has stolen that we have to be determined to get back I was listening the other day to an old school song called self-destruction and at the beginning of that record they play a clip from Malcolm X say we all agree that America has a very serious problem but also our people have a very serious problem and one of the things in our community is that we are losing a lot of ground we are losing a lot of ground and we have to be concerned about how to regain that that ground and recover our future. Joining us today on Third Watch is Brother Marvin Doc Cheatham from the Baltimore branch of the NAACP, the president. Hail to the chief. <laughs> Glad to God see bless you. you Pastor. Thank you for joining us Thanks here for on Third me. Watch. You know, uh, Brother Marvin Doc Cheatham, um, back in the late 60s and early 70s, it was apparent that the NAACP, SNCC, and so many other organizations were definitely needed for our forward progress as a people. Now that we have the house in Randallstown, the house in Owens Mills and we got the Beamer in the driveway and so forth. Many people don't think that these organizations are as needed as they once were. What would you say to persons that say that? I would first and foremost say that the fight for civil rights is almost 24 hours a day. You know, many of us have been fortunate enough to move, as you said, Randallstown, Town, or Columbia Town. But when that cross gets burned on your, your, your lawn, uh, when your car gets spray painted uh, with KKK signs, and these are things that are happening day to day, then people get back into reality to realize that, you know, we may have gotten a little more education, we may have made a little bit more money because we graduated from school, but racism and white supremacy is still prevalent here in America and here in the state of Maryland. And sadly enough, folks don't realize it until they have this happen to them, and then they pick up the phone and ask NAACP, can you help me? Then they think we're relevant uh -huh. when they need our help. Right. <laughs> Let me, let me ask you this. You say, how many calls like that do you usually get? Well, you have to look at how many different phones we have. We, of course, have the branch <laughs> uh, phone number. We're one of the few branches in the entire nation that has our own office. We average at least 100 calls in a week just dealing with people needing help. I give people my home phone number. My home phone number is 410-669-8683. That's my home phone number that I give to the public. I may average 30 calls a day. It could deal with education. It could deal with someone's loved one has been uh, victimized in central booking. Uh, it could be something as, as minuscule as someone needing a scholarship. I average 30 calls a day. My office averages at least 30, I mean 100 in a week asking for help. So it, it's an ongoing thing. Emails, faxes, we get those continuously. The fight for freedom is still out here. It's just a lot of people don't think they need it. It's like some of the most intelligent students in the world go to Johns Hopkins University. We found on that campus probably more than any other campus in Maryland, diversity problems, racism problems, uh, sex discrimination problems on the number one university in the world, Hopkins. It's still here, it's just that we've gotten kind of, I guess, shadow with uh, being materialistic and thinking things aren't bad until it hits home. And when it hits home, 
then folks uh, call the NAACP. We got a young song, our young kids, they sing, when there's something wrong in your neighborhood, you know the song, who you gonna call Ghostbusters? Right. But we tell them something wrong in your neighborhood, who you gonna see? NAACP. I feel, <laughs> I feel, you know, one of the things that I, I, I wonder is that in our community, there, there's a term that they use in battle called shell shot, where there's so much going on, so much blowing up all around you. Uh, you, you go into the, the department store and you get followed around the department store. Uh, you have to deal with uh, issues on your job. Uh, you have to deal with issues in the community. Uh, and then all that's going on, especially in our urban centers with the schools and with the crime and with the violence. What can we do as we attempt to recover our future to, to just keep our people from getting shell-shocked? Is it is it Because I believe that a lot of people aren't as active as they can be because it's it's just too much it's just too much and it, it's 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 easy just to bury your head in the sand and not deal with what's going on in our community well, well first if we could clone you pastor we would do real well uh <laughs> but we, we need to do things such as dr bill cosby dr eric michael dyson they're stepping to us in, in a love way they, they're bringing it real they're talking about real issues talking about how we need to clean up our house we can blame the white man for a lot of issues and a lot of things but a lot of things we need to deal with in home you know one we got to tell a brother it's all right to have a big natural i had a big natural early but wash the hair yeah. you know put some oil or grease on it you know the sisters you, you you can show all the fine clothes that you can have but don't show all of your body leave that till later so you, we got to talk real to our brothers and sisters about the problems we have it and sadly enough we are killing each other needlessly yeah. over, over issues that we shouldn't be fighting over. Uh, of course, we have a serious drug problem throughout the nation, especially in our urban areas, but we have to get the family to deal with family issues. Many of our problems in education, yes, we need a better education system, but if you don't send your child to school having eaten, if you don't help your child with, with homework when they get home, we need to start at home. If we start with home first, we can deal with some of the other problems once we get out of our communities. One of the things I remember back in, in the late 80s especially, when the teen pregnancy epidemic was becoming a great problem in Baltimore City, now we're seeing the, the end result of that because now you have the grandmothers that are 38, great grandmother is 50, uh, mama's 25, and the daughter is a teenager. And no one has ever taught these mothers or these fathers how to parent. How do we get back to, to, to reaching back and teaching family values to, I know that's a, a kind of a, a bad term because the conservatives have snatched it from us, but how they do we go back it from to, us. You put it right. Yeah. <laughs> we go back and recover our family values. I, I think where it can really start passing, that's why I'm so pleased to be here talking with you today. The leadership of us as a people has always come out of the church. We need to get more of our pastors, our imams, our rabbis, to talk real to our people. You know, it's all right to get these fabulous cars and move away from the community, but the message has to come back from the church, from the leaders of the church to the community. The family, we're losing. We're losing a generation of kids. And I blame my generation, the baby boomer bunch. We've not done well in educating our, our children of the importance of the struggle. And sadly enough, we're now into a second generation of young folks not only not knowing about the fight that we had, but not only, they don't even appreciate it. So we gotta start with home, start with church, and organizations such as the NAACP, I don't mind admitting, I was embarrassed about what this organization had done five years ago. I got recruited, you probably didn't know this, I was president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. NAACP recruited me to clean up the NAACP and what we were doing in the city. We gotta get the organizations that used to do the work to get back to doing the work, especially our pastors. All right, having these stained glass windows and riding these $500,000 cars, but do the work that the Lord has given you to do. Right. Serve the people. That's right. We have to we have to get beyond the building, as my wife would say, and 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 work together to roll up our sleeves because the progress that we made from the 1860s to the 1960s under the conditions that we existed under was phenomenal. That's right. And so it lets us know that with the power of God and us working together on one accord, we can accomplish anything. We're, we're going to be back with more with Marvin Doc Cheatham. Some more Third Watch right after this. Have your Bibles with you this morning. Won't you join me in the book of 1 Samuel, the book of 1 
1 Samuel. And it, as you're on your way to 1 Samuel, you can go to the book of, inde of the index. And there in the book of the index, God will reveal to you where you can find the book of 1 Samuel. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 30, beginning at verse 18. 1 Samuel chapter 30, beginning at verse 18. And I won't be before you long. I know this is your summer breeze service. And the, the old song said, the summer breeze makes me feel fine. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. First Samuel chapter 30, and I'm going to actually lift a few verses beginning at verse 6. It says, and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. It says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Tell somebody, that's where you can find strength. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party, and will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. So David and the 600 men with him came to the Besor Ravine, where some stayed behind, for 200 men were too exhausted to cross the ravine. Tell your neighbor, you can stay here if you want, but I'm going on. But David and the 400 men continued the pursuit. And then verse 18, David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken, for David brought everything back. Won't you repeat these words after me? David recovered everything the enemies had taken. Won't you say it a little bit louder? David recovered everything the enemies had taken. Won't you say it real loud this time for the Holy Ghost? Say, David recovered, David recovered. everything David. the enemies had taken. David. Slap your neighbor high five. Say, friend, David. my Christian friend, today David. is my day of recovery. I wish you'd find somebody else. Say, friend, my spirit-filled friend, today is my day of recovery. I wish you'd find somebody else. Say, friend, my Holy Ghost friend, today is my day of recovery. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise as you go to your seat. Tell somebody, today is my day. It's 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 my day of recovery. Hallelujah. Eternal God, our Father, we just ask for your anointing, your blessing, your peace, and your power upon this word. Sit, Dr. Blow, down, dear Lord. Let your spirit stand up in me. God, please don't preach a good word, but preach a word that would do us some good. Let it touch, let it heal, let it deliver. Let it lift the burden, loose the shackle, let it set somebody free. Let it save, let it sanctify, and also let it edify. In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody holla, amen. amen. I want to preach this morning in the time that shall be mine, that today is the day of my recovery. You, you, you know, you know, church, I hear people say all the time that I'm going to take back what the devil stole from me. However, every time I check back in with them, they still do not appear to have any of their stuff back. They, they still seem to be broke, busted, and disgusted, but I thought they said they were getting their stuff back. So I wondered this morning if there's anybody here who recognizes and realizes that there is some stuff. It may be natural, but there is some stuff. It may be supernatural, but there is some stuff. It may be tangible, but there is some stuff. It may be in intangible, but you know that there is some stuff that God promised you, or there may be some stuff that God gave to you that is currently not in your hands. If I'm talking to you this morning, then you up in the right house, because today is your day of breakthrough to a recovered future. For I know that there's some stuff that I lost on yesterday. There's some stuff that I lost today that will impact the quality of my tomorrow. So what I need God to do is to give me a breakthrough that will recover my future. In, in other words, if you don't have the degree, if you don't have the she, if you don't have the he, if you don't have the victory, the job, or the prosperity, then you need a breakthrough to recover your future. In, in other words, beloved, if your today does not look like the, the tomorrow that you expected on last week, if your today does not look like
like the tomorrow you dreamed about last month. If your today does not look like the tomorrow you prayed for last year, last decade, or last century, then you need a breakthrough to recover your future. In fact, you need to declare in your spirit that this is not what God showed me, and I will not settle for less because the God that I serve promised me a whole lot more. Is there anybody here who knows that God promised you a whole lot more? God promised me a whole lot more than a woman who can't conjugate the verb to be. God promised me a whole lot more than a brother that won't get up off the couch and go to work. Slap your neighbor high five say, God promised me a whole lot more. Is there anybody here who can say, I'm thankful for the GED, but God spoke PhD. Is there anybody here who can say, I have an all right life, but God promised me abundant life. Slap your neighbor high five say, God promised me more. And I can't settle for less because the God I serve promised me. Somebody holler more. Is there anybody here who knows that back in school, back in, oh, keep my mind, Holy Ghost, that back in school, in the high school, you were going to open your own business. You were going to be the first black president. You were going to be a millionaire, an actor, or a spy. Then you got to recover your future because what God told you back then was vision. And without a vision, the people perish. And everything that's been coming your way since that day has been the devil trying to snatch the vision that God planted in you from the very beginning. But slap your neighbor high five say, I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way but thank God I got the Holy Ghost because I can speak to any mountain that's in my path and say be thou removed slap your neighbor high five say I know that's right whatever's in my path this morning gotta move and get out the way slap your neighbor high five say you better use your authority Oh, tell somebody I've got to recover my future. You, you've got to walk around and say, this ain't the right house. This is not the right job. This is not the right car. This is not the right circumstance. This is not the future that God showed to me. Somebody give me a telephone. Somebody give me a Blackberry so I can call 911 because someone is taking my designer original destiny and replaced it with a cheap imitation. And how many of you know that counterfeits don't spin? Slap your neighbor high five say, I cannot settle for a counterfeit when God has a designer original destiny for me. Tell your neighbor, God did not create me to be an imitation. God did not create me to be a copy, but God said before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew who you were. God said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Slap your neighbor high five. Say, I can't settle for a counterfeit. Somebody holler, break it down, blow. You, you see, preachers, I, I just don't believe, I just don't believe that Martin, Malcolm, and Mega died so that my children could be dumb as grits. I, I just don't believe Martin, Malcolm, and Mega died so that my kids could go to schools that are worse in now in 1996 than they were in 1956. I, I don't believe that Martin, Malcolm, and Mega died so that 79% of all the new AIDS cases in America would be black females of childbearing years. I don't believe that Martin, Malcolm, and Mega died so that the growth national product of black America could be $790 billion, which is more than all the countries in Africa and the Caribbean combined, which gives black America the ninth wealthiest economy on the planet, but yet and still 95% of all black America's wealth is given away to Macy's, is given away to Nordstrom's, is given away to the heck company, is given away to the Lexus dealer. Oh, y'all don't hear me up in here. And we only reinvest 5% of our combined wealth into our schools, churches, and communities. What if black America was tithing our $790 billion. We wouldn't have to go to Bank America. We wouldn't have to sell chicken to build a new building. But we could just walk in the authority that God gave us. Tell your neighbor, we got to take it back. Our people didn't march, sit in protest, endure water hoses, dogs, bull corners, Greg Traggers, Governor George Wallace, bombs, lynching, and intimidation. Harriet Tubman didn't free the slaves by night for us to, in 2006, be hoochies, hustlers, pimps, gamblers, and hoes. And for the N-word to be a term of endearment, slap your neighbor, high five, say no, that ain't right, that ain't right, that ain't right, I got to get my future back, I never ever ran from the Ku Klux Klan, but in Baltimore I could get gunned down by a black man, I've got to get my future back, slap your neighbor, high five, say I know that's right, I've got to get it back, I've got to get it back, I've got to get it back, somebody say I've got to get it back!
Welcome back to Third Watch. We are here with Marvin Doc Cheatham. It has been a wonderful experience. We thank you so very much for the opportunity to sit and to dialogue with you about some of the things that are going on in our community. It is a wonderful, wonderful experience. We are talking about a breakthrough to recover future because there are many of things that we have lost. And if the truth be told, my brother and my sister, we have given away a lot. And now we're ready to take back what the enemy has stolen and that which we've also given away. Thank you again for being here. God bless you. Thank you so very much for having me. And a recovered future is what we're talking about today. And more than just a cliche, so many times we hear, I'm taking back what the devil stole from me, but mm. we have a person present with us who's actively involved in taking that back. And that's why we wanted to have him on the show. So even as you're coming in from Denny's and the IHOP and the club, there's some things that you may have even lost tonight. Come on. And we're gonna Come give on. you a prescription <laughs> of how to get that stuff back. One of the things that I was watching the news the other day, the local news, and I saw that you're doing a thousand man initiative. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us more about that and what that's all about? Well, you will remember October 15, 1995, a million men were called by Minister Louis Farrakhan, Sigma brother Ben Chavis, mm -hmm. myself, and Dr. Lawrence Miller. Uh, we met in July. Folks didn't believe that we could bring a million men to, to the Washington, D.C. And the largest city that brought men to Washington was, in fact, Baltimore. Wow. What I've decided to do with the support of brothers from the Nation of Islam, uh, some of the long, long, strong leaders in our city, we decided to call 1,000 men back to Baltimore to deal with the crime, drugs, and violence that's taking place in our city. Uh, so we're hoping and praying that men will come and one, get better trained and educated as to how we can help our young brothers and our boys get away from the violence, get away from the drugs and become better men because we're losing an, a generation of young guys. Last year alone in our city, we lost 275 folks due to violence. And what we're saying is starting this new year, we're going into the wrong direction. We're about to do worse than we did last year. So we're, we feel certain that now is the time to call men back from the Million Man March and have them come join with us to deal with the crime, violence, and drugs in our community. And we're praying, Pastor, that we get at least 1,000 by April because the ultimate goal is 5,000 by, by July. You know, I, I found that we have a lot of good ideas and a lot of good initiatives in our community. I believe that anything outside of the power of Jesus Christ is only a good idea. You need the power of the gospel. You need the power of what God can do and the anointing behind the gospel to actually move any movement. What is it that the church can do to support that which you're trying to do for our community? First and foremost, let me hasten to say I totally agree with you. They called me the praying president. And I tell folks, without God's leadership and direction, we will not be successful. What the church can actually do is to send men to us, whether they're in the greater Baltimore metropolitan area or not, we need men coming to help us. You know, oftentimes we're successful in life, but we're fortunate enough that we're able to move away from our urban areas. We tell folks we need to reach back. We need to come back to the neighborhoods that need us. We can gather more men from our churches and our faith-based institutions than any other locations. So church has to be there and God has to be at the uppermost of what we're doing because without God's direction, we're gonna be in trouble. Let's get back into this word. Today is my day of recovery, a breakthrough to a recovered future right here on Third Watch. There's no way in the world that we should be 12% of the general population, but over 65% of the prison population. Did the, the, the third good marshal and the great minds at the Howard University School of Law spend years on fighting for equal opportunities in education to have more brothers at, on cell block H than at Morgan State University and Coppin State College? No, baby. Not only do I need a breakthrough to a recovered future, but we all need a breakthrough. Slap your neighbor high five and say, don't try to look cute. I know you got your little outfit on. I know you got your weave sewn in tight. I know you got your contacts on. I know you got a little piece of car outside. But if my brother's in trouble, slap your neighbor high five and say, so am I. If my brother can't make it, then I can't make it. Because a chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Oh, somebody don't want to talk to me up in here. Slap your neighbor high five and say, are you the weakest link? Are you the weakest link? Are you the weakest link? If you cannot say amen, then just throw your head back and say, ouch. Because I read that what AIDS doesn't kill, 
violence kills, what violence doesn't kill, heart disease kills, what heart disease doesn't kill, diabetes kills. And this is in direct contradiction to the word of God because my word says, beloved, I wish among all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. My Bible says that you shall be the head and not the tail. So just in case you thought I wasn't talking to you, just in case you thought I was talking to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need a breakthrough too. No ancestor of yours or mine ever prayed to God for descendants who in 2006 would have a dimmer future than they did in 1806. Is there anybody up in Southern Baptist Church this morning who's ready to get your future back? Slap your neighbor high five and say that little short black man is talking to me. I need to get my future back. I need to get my future back. I need to get my future back. If you want your future back, throw your head back and holler, give it back. And church, that brings me to our text this morning. In our text, we meet a man who needed to recover his future. The, the Bible says that his name was David. And in verse 30 and 3 of our text, it says that when David came to Ziglag, he found it destroyed by fire and his wives, sons, and daughters taken captive. Because understand, beloved, that whenever the enemy wants to rob a man of his future, he does it by taking his wife and his children. Some of y'all remember the old welfare rules that would not allow public assistance if there was a man in a house. For if a man has no wife, he cannot produce children. And without children, there is no future. So the Bible says that the enemies, the Amalekites, came in and robbed David of his future. Thank you for tuning into Third Watch Ministry Broadcast. This message of faith has been specifically designed and ordered for you by God. That's why you couldn't sleep this morning. That's why you had to come in early because God had something he wanted to say to you. My brother, my sister, you need this message of faith. Order the CD or the DVD because you need this message of faith. You can add this tape to your Christian library by calling right now, 410-581-7733, 410-581-7733. Or if the message of faith just moved you, if it just ministered to your heart in a particular way and you need somebody to talk to, if you need ministry, give us a call right now. We're waiting for your call at 410-884-1007, 410-884-1007. And check this out. If you can't wait till next week to get another message from Third Watch, Check out our website at www.breakitdownblow.org, www.breakitdownblow.org. You can get messages of faith on demand. You can go back over the message again and again, but please make sure that you pick up the phone, that you order the message, pick up the phone, receive ministry, check out the website, and get blessed. We'll see you next week right here on Third Watch. If you want Third Watch to come to your place of business or recreation, contact us at 410-884-1007 or email us at info at breakitdownblow.org. We want to see your face in the place at these upcoming ministry events. To order a copy of this or any message of faith, contact us.